All right, we are here talking to Dylan Cuthbert from Q Games uh, about the new title, The Tomorrow Children. Yes. So uh, give me a brief synopsis of the game in five words or less. Go. <laughs> There's no way I can do that. <laughs> Oh, that's six. Oh, Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> okay. Um, so, well, why don't you give us a little bit longer, but some kind of, uh, some okay. sort of brief explanation of what this crazy game is. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's a Marxism simulator, a parody kind of, of uh, that kind of socialist sort of Soviet kind of state kind of thing. Um, but basically what happened is uh, that an experiment, experiment went wrong in, in like 1960s Russia and it melted the human consciousness, of, of, well basically the entire consciousness of the human race into that white void, that's like the white surface that you see in the game. Yeah. And from there uh, the scientists have been trying to recover the human race and they've only just got, it's moved on 100 years and a lot of technology has kind of advanced but it's still, they haven't really restored the population. and. Um, but they've managed, managed to create these like projection clones um, that they can send out into the void, and that's you. So you're all these projection clones, basically, which is why you all look the same. You, you have different clothes, but you, you're, you're basically the same uh, uh, DNA. Um, and then you go out into the void, and you're trying to restore uh, the human race. You look for Russian dolls, and you take them back to the town, and you, you restore the population of, of the world, basically, uh, one by one. Uh, and while you're doing that, there are these huge monsters and things roaming the void, which are actually born from this consciousness of, of, the, human, of the human race. And the islands, there are these huge islands as well, which you're mining, and those are also born from the consciousness. So everything in the, from the void is basically born from like, uh, hu humanity's consciousness. And that's why it's kind of crazy. So your typical Q Games game, right? <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah, but in, in glorious 3D vision, yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah, this is a bit of a departure from, yeah. from the types of games we've seen from you guys in the past. Uh, what really brought that on? What did you, were you looking for some crazy challenge? <laughs> what happened there? Well, I, I've always been into kind of 3D, but um, in the past few years, you know, people know us for Pixel Junk primarily, but... Yep. I've always, you know, from the P PS2 years, I, was, I made the Duck in the Bath demo, for example, that, 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 that sort of promoted the PS2 back then. So I've always been into that kind of 3D technology, anything that's really cutting edge. And I got a sense with the PS4 that we could do, that it had, you know, this power that would let us really do more and let us invent maybe some new sort of rendering technologies. And that's what we started off with. And so we, we, we tried to create... Um, uh, this uh, sort of deformable landscape, which is like freely deformable, and which all the lighting just works with, you know. So if you dig a hole, it's properly dark. You know, if there's light streaming in from the outside, it probably bounces into the tunnel. You know, so you get those bounces of light and stuff. And so uh, a lot of the effort at the beginning was getting this sort of tech to work right and look good. And I think, it, you know, if you compare it to other games that you're using the more standard tech that there is nowadays. Um, uh, it does look different. I think it does give it like an extra sheen or something, you know. And it's not really a boast as such. I mean, the, the, I think everybody will, will move towards this kind of tech eventually because it's just it gives you so much more uh, like freedom to do stuff. You know, the lighting just works. You know, it's good. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, you've had the alpha going on on the PS4 for a little while, and uh, it's over now, well, yeah, yeah, and you were letting people stream it. Yes, yeah, no problem there. Well, we wanted to show off the, the, the visuals to as many people as possible, and um, we thought the best way for that uh, would be to uh, just let them stream it, you know, and, uh, and it was really good. I mean, we got all these people going, you know, what the hell is this, you know? Because <laughs> they'd see it, you know, it show up on Twitch or you're on, uh, you know, on, the, on the PlayStation um, browser, you know, and, they, and they'd think, that looks, what is that? You know, they, that looks crazy and of course they're right it does look crazy <laughs> so. yeah it, it it certainly does um so uh with the monsters that, that are coming through yeah. um and then at some point in in one of the uh games i was playing in the alpha there there were bombers that were oh, no it wasn't bombers yeah, it was are, actually there are flying creatures yeah. there were yeah flying creatures yeah, yeah, yeah. that that were dropping bombs essentially yeah. in the in the in the landscape um so what we saw, uh, what I saw at least, uh, there's you have gun emplacements. Yeah, which you can place. So yeah. yeah. Okay. And 
you could turn them right on your own city if you wanted. If you want to, yeah. And, and start blowing things up. You can do anything like that, yeah. So what I tried to do, I did it too late, though, because we ran out of ammo. Right. I, try, I was trying to blow stuff up and get sent to jail. Yeah, yeah. So is that possible? <laughs> uh, not in the alpha, but it is in the final game. Um, but of course, you don't. It's not an automatic thing, you know. The other players will be the ones who will come and hunt you down. So okay. there'll be a little bit of that kind of play going on as well. There, okay. like I mean, what um, you know, my line is like you know what uh, sort of um, Soviet kind of state uh, would there be? You know, what, what it wouldn't be complete without like a, a secret police force, right? And so. Uh, there'll be roles to, for you to play in the game like that, you know, where you are kind of like policing your own town. And so if you see people griefing and stuff like that, then you, you'll be out to get them, you know. And so even in, even in the alpha test, actually, if you get booed enough, uh, your silhouette turns black. Uh, and then so when, ev when everybody sees you around and they see that you're black, they go, well, he's a wrong one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to sort him out, you know. So um, that kind of th thing is what we're hoping. We want a natural solution for that kind of thing because it's fun. We don't want to get rid of it because we don't mind the occasional person like you know being stupid like that. You know because it's some people just want to do that kind of stuff. But we do want we do want it to police itself. Like we don't want to have rigid rules that will stop that. Yeah. We want the other players to to all collaborate to do it. You know. Cool. Um, now one of the other things I was seeing there, you can bring people back uh, there or there were other people in the town yeah, like yeah. old women and and yeah, things like yeah, that yeah. and where were they coming from i didn't quite get that when i was playing so they are the uh the lost population basically they, they are the real humans uh you're just a projection clone in the game so um you find russian dolls out in the islands and you and you bring those back and they they basically have have the dna locked within them like for safety they're like little like safety containers um, you bring them back, you put them on this like apparatus, and then the apparatus turns them into humans. And and then as the population increases, the types of buildings you can build and the types of uh, things you can do uh, uh, get unlocked. Um, but at the same time, you've got to keep all those population fed. So you've got to keep you've got to you know uh, farm apples and stuff like that, keep trees healthy, and you know that kind of thing. So there's a whole section of the game for that side. So people who are like farming, they can do that. While the other people who like shooting and destroying things can go and, you know, take down the monsters. So it's it's a really good kind of balance, you know. Okay. And I had heard that uh, there are other towns uh, that you could come into conflict with at some point. Is that possible? Yeah, not. Is that really? Yeah, not conflict so much. But um, there are other towns. Obviously, other players will be in different towns. Um, and there'll be uh, basically a train system, uh, an underground train system, where so there'll be you can get in the station. You you pay a few coupons and. And you can go to another person's town, like a, your friend's town, for example. Just go to a friend's town, and you'll be there as a uh, as a visitor. Um, so if you log off and log back in, you'll be back in your town. So you have to go back there, uh, but um, it will let you sort of flexibly go around. But then there'll be ways to move permanently to a town if there's if um, if there's a living slot open, like if there's a house available, kind of thing. So it'll be it'll feel like a very living, breathing kind of universe, you know. So. In the alpha test, it's just like one town, and it's like you know you clear it or you you uh, uh, fail. You know you, the town gets destroyed. But in the in this in the, in the final game, it'll be uh, per more permanent. So you know you decide where you want to live, and you you live there, and you and then you're all working together to try and protect that town. And then uh, there'll there'll be like a ranking system against other towns, uh, which means that you'll be trying to make your town better than other towns, just so you get uh, more uh, experience points and stuff, because you'll get like bonuses from that. So, cool. Yeah. Oh, and there's also interpersonal ranking as uh, inter inter civilian or citizen ranking as well, where um, uh, you know every uh, game day, you know, uh, you get listed up against the other players, and so the people who work the hardest get more experience points. So there's that that there's that sort of um, competitiveness in there as well. But most part, it's all very collaborative. So, okay. Yeah. Like real life, you know. Yeah. You're collaborative uh, and you're competitive. <laughs> <laughs> I liked. Uh, I like that. Uh, all you have is apples, really, to eat. Yeah, yeah. There will be different fruit, though. There will be. But it's all fruit, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At the moment, I mean, maybe we'll put an apple pie in somewhere, but you know. <laughs> okay. But there'll be, you know, um, in general, it's um, right now it's just fruit. Yeah. But there'll be, each different town will have different fruit. So. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, okay. and you can take it back to your town as well. So you you could start growing other towns' fruit in your town if you want to. So. So there'll be that sort of like. Sort of, I don't know, um, Animal Crossing style kind of play in there as well. So. 
Cool. All right. Uh, now, uh, left field question, um, or left field question comment. Um, you and a bunch of the guys uh, have put together some amazing videos where you where you play <laughs> where you play a lot of uh, New Order songs and things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could you tell people about that who might not have seen it? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we have a we had a um, we have a, a little music studio in the office, and um, basically, people at the office we kind of get together. Uh, and make music, you know, and, and it's kind of like a higgledy piggledy kind of affair. So, whoever's available, we get them in, and then we, we make music. But a group of us uh, decided we want to do a, a, a remake of, or you know, a, a cover of um, New Order's Blue Monday uh, because we're big fans. Of and it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and, we, and we put a lot of effort into it. Um, we spent like two or three weeks rehearsing, like every lunchtime, and um, and we got all the right sounds. We tried to get as close as we could to the original sounds. Uh, and we, we just had great fun, like you know, getting it, you know, down, and it it was you know, it's really good fun, you know, and um, and quite difficult. That drum beat is it's originally an electronic kit, you know, it's a it's yeah. a sequencer kit, but we did it live. So if you search on YouTube, you can find it. Yeah. yeah, if you, yeah. I I suggest you do that, people. <laughs> it's awesome. It was also to celebrate the thirtieth anniversary of that song of Blue Monday, so it's just the right timing as well. That's cool. We That's got a cool. comment from uh, Peter Hook, the bassist of oh, New really? Order. Yeah, um, and he uh, he was amazed that we got the drum beat. Done. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, all right. So, do we have a, a rough date uh, idea uh, when they will come? Early next year is kind of you know sort of like the, well the, at least the first half of next year at some point. That's where we're aiming for at the moment. And we and we plan you know we do plan to uh, keep updating it as well. So we have all kinds of stuff going in there that's just really interesting and and people should really keep an eye on news about it because bit by bit we'll be releasing even more information and there's stuff there's huge swathes of stuff that we haven't um talked about yet like you know that we, we didn't put in the alpha test at all so mm. it's going to be fun <laughs> well it is a it's a fantastically different game it's yeah. it's unlike anything out there it looks unlike anything out there so it's definitely worth a look uh, as as we get closer to closer to launch. So well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah.